All right, in this video, we're gonna do something called function dilations. Um, in math, to dilate something means to multiply it by a factor of something. Um, some of the problems that we're gonna multiply, we will do dilation by a variable. Some problems will do dilation by a number. Uh, it really just depends on the problem. So today, we're just gonna do the multiplication parts. And then the video for tomorrow will show how to find the zeros based off of the functions that we create today. So problem number one, we have some expressions here. We have this expression 2x minus one, we have this expression x plus two, and we have this last expression negative three x minus one. And the directions say to create a new function f of x that is a product of these three expressions and to write f of x in standard form. Okay, so a couple of things going on here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the new function f of x. All right, so f of x is equal to. Now, mathematically, when we talk about product, product means to multiply. So we need to take these three expressions and multiply them together. So I'm gonna take my first expression, 2x minus one times x plus two times negative three x minus one, okay? So now this function is fine, except it says to write it in standard form. Now standard form is not always what we think of when we think of um, like quadratic formula or quadratic equations because um, every equation has some kind of standard form. Um, one of the other ways to look at it is to multiply this all out, and we're going to write our answer in what's called descending order. Now, how do you multiply three things at a time? Well, you don't. What we're going to do is multiply two of these factors at a time. Now, it doesn't matter which two you pick. I'm literally just going to read from left to right. So I'm going to take this first factor, and I'm going to multiply it times this second factor. Now, lots of ways to do multiplication. For this particular problem, I'm gonna do distributive property, okay? So we've got two x times x, so this is gonna be two x squared. Two x times two is gonna be plus four x. Negative one times x, so minus one x, and there's gonna be a minus two there. Now you'll notice I'm still keeping this in parentheses, which I wouldn't normally do, except for the fact that, well, we still need to multiply by this. All right, and so this term is still sitting here that needs to be multiplied by all of this. So I wanna make sure I don't lose the multiplication in the problem. All right, in that first set of parentheses, I can combine these two like terms. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So two x squared plus three x minus two, all times negative three x minus one. So we just multiplied the first two pieces together, the first two little um, parts together. And now we need to move on and see if we can multiply this answer that we just got with this last little factor here, this last little expression. So little distributive property, um, and I'm gonna take, let's see, f of x here. That's not gonna change in this problem, so just leave it as f of x. And I'm gonna take this first term, so 2x squared times this first term. So negative 6x to the third. I'm gonna take that first term again times that second term, so negative two x squared. Now I'm done with the two x squared, I'm gonna move on to three x here. I'm gonna multiply three x times negative three x, so negative nine x squared. And then three x times negative one is gonna be negative three x. And the last thing I need to do here is take this little negative two uh, times this negative three x, so positive six x, and then this negative two times negative one, so how about a positive two? And when I wrote that down, you'll notice there's no parentheses anymore because I am actually now done with the multiplication problems, but what I'm not done with is I still wanna combine some like terms, all right? So negative 2x squared and negative 9x squared are like, negative 3x and positive 6x are like. So f of x is equal to negative 6x cubed minus 11x squared 
plus 3x plus 2. That, ladies and gentlemen, is standard form. So standard form means you've got the function notation here, equal to, and you literally, what's it's called descending order. So you start with your highest power, in this case, x to the third. The next term has x squared. The next term has x. The last term has your constant. So if you look, you're literally dropping a power each time. So 3, 2, 1, and then none at the end. So that's the first part of problem number one. It's setting up just the f of x, the new function in standard form. So I'm happy with that one. I'm going to go ahead and move on to number two here. So number two is just like number one. We have three little expressions. We've got x plus three. We have 2x minus 1, and we have negative 2x uh, plus 2. And it says to create a new function. In this case, we're talking about g of x. That is the product of these expressions. And again, we want to write g of x in standard form. Okay, so g of x is equal to, I'm going to write out all of these expressions. Each one gets its own set of parentheses so that I make sure I'm multiplying the whole thing. And then for this problem, I'm gonna do a little bit of, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, multiplication using multiplication boxes. You don't have to, it's really up to you. So I'm gonna take the first little binomial here, x plus three times two x minus one. So off to the side, I'm gonna set up a little multiplication box. And I'm going to put x plus 3 across the top, so that splits right between those two terms. And then I've got 2x minus 1, which will split between those two terms. And I need to fill this in like a regular multiplication um, table, if you remember those from when you were in you know, grade school. So you've got x times 2x, so 2x squared. 3 times 2x is going to be positive 6x x times negative 1 is going to be negative 1x or just negative x. And then negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Um, oftentimes, you're going to look for like terms. We've got positive 6x here and negative x here. So we want to combine those. So when I go to write the next line here, all right, so I've got g of x is equal to, I've got this 2x squared. I'm going to combine these two terms in the diagonal here. And then negative 3 is going to be its own piece. So 2x squared plus 5x minus 3, and I still need to multiply that, so that's why the parentheses are still there, times negative 2x plus 2. And I can set up another multiplication box for that, all right? You can obviously, you can absolutely distribute. You don't have to do the multiplication boxes. I'm just showing you a couple different ways. So 2x, uh, nope, squared. Hold on, hold on, squared. There we go, plus 5x minus 3. So split between each term. And then we're multiplying times negative 2x plus 2. So we've got to do six little multiplication problems here. So negative 4x cubed, negative 10x squared, and then positive 6x. I'm going to go across the bottom row here. So plus 4x squared plus 10x, and then minus 6. All right, a couple of like terms I want to pick up here. Uh, let's see, we've got negative 10x squared, which would be like to positive 4x squared. 6x and 10x are like, but the f negative 4x cubed and the negative 6 are not like to anything. So those don't have uh, anything they're going to go with. So the final answer here, so g of x in standard form, I'm going to start with the highest power of x, so negative 4x cubed. Now I want to combine these two x squared terms, so negative 6x squared. I'm going to combine our x terms, so plus 16x, and then the constant at the end, minus 6. All right, so that is dilating when you have these expressions that we're just multiplying them all together, okay? Um, so in the notes, there's another part to both of these problems that says to determine the zeros. That's, again, not the focus for this video. It'll be a second video that we'll go through. Now that we've got these functions, how do we find the zeros, okay? What I'm going to do right now, though, is slide down to question number three and question number four. 
says to dilate the function below by x, okay, to create a new function of higher degree. Sketch the, fun uh, the graph of the higher degree function. And then the last piece, and this is going to be what we'll talk about in the video tomorrow, is to identify the zeros from the graph. So we'll already have the graph made, and we'll figure out the zeros from that. Now, what we've got to figure out here is we have this graph drawn. What we've got to do is figure out how are we going to dilate by x. So one of the ways to do this, in, and to me it's the easiest one when you have the picture, is you are just going to draw the line y equals x. Okay, So y equals x in slope-intercept form has an intercept of 0. Okay, So we're going to go through the y-axis at 0. And then it has a slope um, that's 1 over 1. I'm actually going to try and match color here so it's just you can see the two blue graphs. All right, so up one over one, and we can keep doing this all the way till the upper corner of this graph here. And I'm gonna reverse and then fill in the lower left here. So that right there is the line y equals x. So what we're gonna be doing is actually multiplying this together to figure out some kind of new function. So the first thing you're gonna do, all right, and I'll put little steps over to the side here. So number one is to find the x-intercepts, okay? Intercepts, helps if I can remember how to spell that word. Okay, intercepts. And I want you to put really dark dots on them, okay? So right down here, we only have one x-intercept. It's right there, okay? Now, what you wanna do is analyze the function. Give me a second here. Analyze, I have that right. <laughs> the function um, for positive and negative, okay? Now it sounds kind of weird, but what I want you to look at, and I'm gonna kind of use a little dotted line here where this x-intercept is. I'm gonna put a little green dotted line in here. If I look to the left of this dotted line, so I'm looking to the left here. What I wanna look at is, is our function positive or negative? So the blue curve that was originally there Okay, that has negative y values, all right? The line that we drew in also has negative y values. So if we are multiplying a negative times a negative, that means our function that we're gonna need to draw needs to have positive, and let me actually use a pen over here, needs to have positive values here, okay? Now if I look at the right side of this graph. I want to analyze the positive and negative. So the blue curve, negative. It has negative y values here. Think about the ordered pairs. But the line that we drew in for to represent x has positive values. So if we take a negative times a positive, we would end up with negative values. Okay? So what has to happen here is our function that we're gonna draw has to have positive values on the left, negative values on the right, and it has to go through this point right here. So what might that look like? And this is just a sketch, right? We don't have to be perfect about our values, but it might look something like that, okay? Now, what you've just done is you have actually just drawn what's called a cubic function. A cubic function is a third degree function, okay? So when you have problems that say f of x is equal to x to the third, that's the kind of function that we're talking about. All right, let's go on to number four, see if we can do the same thing, okay? All right, so this time we just have a line drawn, okay? Dilate the function given below by x. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start with y equals x and graph that in. To create a new function of higher degree, sketch the graph. Again, it says to identify the zeros. We will do that part tomorrow, all right, or in the next video, depending on if you, what time you're watching this. Um, all right, 
so I'm going to make a nice bright pink or bright orange graph here uh, to graph y equals x. So I'm going to start at the origin and I'm going to graph up and to the right, up one, right one, up one, right one, keep going. And I'm going to literally go all the way up to the corner. I'm going to do the same thing going lower left. So down one, left one, down one, left one. Okay. All right. So our steps are still the same. We want to identify the X intercepts. I'm going to change colors here. I want to see if I can get something. Uh, I'll go with this bright purple, I guess. Um, we want to identify the X intercepts. So we have an X intercept here, and then the one we drew in is right there. So I'm really trying to uh, make those really obvious. Okay. Now I'm going to use the highlighter again, and I am going to draw in some vertical lines where those X intercepts are. Okay, so X intercept here and X intercept here. And this is where we need to figure out, are we positive, negative, like what's going on with the graph? Okay, so right here, if we look far left, okay, farthest to the left past this last uh, X intercept, the blue line has negative Y values, or yeah, negative Y values, and the orange line has negative Y values. So negative times a negative is a positive. So our curve needs to be positive in this section. Okay, positive meaning above the x-axis. Now if I look right between these two x-intercepts, the blue line's positive, it's above the x-axis, but the orange line's negative. So positive times a negative is a negative. Okay, barely able to fit that in there. All right, a negative value, which means that our curve is going to be below the x-axis. Okay, that's where the negative function values are. All right, if we look far right, we've got the blue curve is nice and positive up here. It's above the x-axis. Orange curve is also positive. It's above the x-axis. So a positive times a positive is a positive. Okay, so I need to be positive up here, positive over here, and negative down here. And I need to go through these two x-intercepts. So that might look something like that. And for those of you playing along at home, we've just created a quadratic. It is a second degree polynomial. All right, so we just took two lines and multiplied them together and we created a quadratic, which is kind of interesting. So a first degree function times a first degree function creates a second degree function. All right, so the last bit we're going to get into really quickly is five and six, at least the first part of it, part A. Okay, so directions here, consider this function, right? I'm giving you a function f of x and you want to dilate f of x by x to create a new function called h of x. All right, so we wanna be careful. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write h of x. And to figure out h of x, I need to take f of x and multiply it times x. So x times x minus 1 times, whoops, that is a horrible looking 2. Let's go 2x minus 3. Now, there is absolutely nothing in part A that says that we have to write this in standard form. So don't. <laughs> it's extra time that you don't need to do. Um, and it's not required. So let it be in factored form. All right, h of x is equal to x times x minus 1 times 2x minus 3. We'll do part b later on, not to worry about that for right now, okay? And last but not least for today, for this video, for number 6, we have this function g of x, all right? And we are creating, we're dilating g of x by 2x to create a new function called a of x. All right, so we're going to start with the new function name, a of x. And we are dilating by 2x times all of the pieces of g of x. So 3x minus 1, and then x plus 2. 
Again, there's nothing that says it has to be in standard form or descending order, so don't bother. All right, I know the video is a little bit long. Hopefully you're able to break it up in pieces for yourself. Any questions or concerns you have, drop me a message or join one of our Zoom links. I hope this